For 20 years, our own military funded a secret program to develop psychic spies, agents who could project their conscious mind behind enemy lines. When the Reagan administration set sights on outlaw President Muammar Gaddafi, these psychics were consulted to pinpoint his whereabouts. The Defense Intelligence Agency called their program Stargate, and their psychics were known as remote viewers. These viewers would use pen and paper and a form of automatic writing to produce psychic impressions of activities any place in the world. While the degree of accuracy involved made it far from a sure thing, the fact that they claim to have consistently tested at a percentage above chance makes remote viewing one of the most intriguing phenomenon in the realm of the paranormal. Just what are these psychic experiments that kept our government so intrigued that they funded them for 20 years? Many people still find them so fascinating that they are being conducted in private workshops around the country today. Here in Sausalito, California, a remote viewing workshop is being presented by Dr. Wayne Carr. We're ready to proceed now. Carr is a licensed psychologist who has been trained in the same remote viewing techniques used by the military. His class is made up of those who, like Carr, are fascinated by the phenomenon and wish to utilize remote viewing in practical ways in their own lives. Terry Veramontes is a hairdresser. Dr. Deanna Dare is a teacher and counselor. And Mark Hall is a firefighter who has spent years developing his remote viewing technique. Take your pen and probe that and tell Dr. Me Carr teaches the group a variety of concentration exercises, ways to mentally free associate that, according to Carr, can stimulate a natural psychic ability we all possess. Keep letting it flow. The objective of the class is to identify a photo inside a sealed envelope. If successful, a significant accomplishment. Okay. Top Let yourself have fun with this. The participants sketch drawings and jot down concepts. descriptive words that concepts. come to them in flashes of inspiration. Ideas, abstractions, concepts. Put them down. The information being gathered seems to be cryptic and contrary. One person perceives something soft, while his neighbor picks up on something cold. It's the job of the tasker, or group leader, to help interpret the data. So she's got a structure that's in a circle, a circular structure. And give me your top view. OK, here's the top view. What a coincidence. She's got another something in a circle. Amazingly, nearly everyone in the class draws at least one circle. I attempt the exercise myself and draw a circle, too. OK, he's got something top view, something that looks somewhat circular. It's a little squarish, but it's also circular. He's got a basic circle. And what kind of, what were you saying about this? That this people, at a, people at a sort of open, grassy area. People in an open, grassy park, area. Uh, this is exactly what this is, people in an open, grassy area. And you even said near England or London. You said London. Hyde Park, London. Okay, that's, when that's the target AOL, is finally so. revealed, the class is startled. OK, here is the target. We got something in a grassy area with people looking at it that's around, and it's a semicircle. Because it doesn't go all the way around, it's, the target is Stonehenge. Here's my drawing. Now here's the target. The similarities are undeniable. OK, here's the top view from John Eric. Not only did all of us seem to tune into Stonehenge, yes. Mark Hall actually wrote the word Stonehenge. Mark, uh, who is an experienced viewer, has been sitting off by himself. Uh, basically, he has actually named the target. OK, if, I want you to be able to zoom in on the word Stonehenge. This was most of our first attempt. We've never even heard of anything like this. And here we have a, a gentleman that sits over there with his little cap sitting back. He's a viewer. He's done this before. And on his first attempt, what we're just kind of like just barely doing baby steps, he writes Stonehenge. I myself had picked up on a grassy field with a statue or monument near London. Was I remote viewing? Wayne Carr says yes. Psychologist Ray Hyman says no. At best, these remote viewers get about 15% of what they say correct. Well, it means that, that, that about 85% of what they say is wrong. Hyman was hired by the United States government to review the 20-year remote viewing research project. In a detailed report prepared for the Defense Intelligence Agency, Hyman concluded that the phenomenon of remote viewing was at best a noble failure and at worst an age-old mind-reading trick. Remote viewing, of course, is the same category as any kind of psychic reading, what we call cold reading. 
And you can get wonderful matches between any set of descriptions people make and a target. And if you don't realize the, the ways in which we can fool ourselves this way, it's, it's very compelling. How many people got circles from the top view? Raise your hand. But how do we explain the apparent success Dr. Carr's class had with the Stonehenge example? Six, seven, eight. If we look closely at the students' notes, the first thing we notice is that nobody, save one, drew or wrote the word Stonehenge. What they did draw were various shapes and squiggles. It's a specific step-by-step -step procedure full of sketches and probings and drawings. And by doing this over a period of time, you start getting more and more uh, in contact with the target and more of a stronger sense of presence at the target. But skeptics cite this vague aspect of remote viewing as its biggest weakness. One of the reasons why it seems so qualitatively compelling is because people can read into it. This is called subjective validation. We can, once we believe that this is supposed to match that particular target, we will find all kinds of wonderful ways in which it does. Remember, the group leader or tasker knows what the target is. His viewers have been writing and drawing for an hour. At the end of the session, skeptics like Ray Hyman believe the tasker simply goes on a fishing trip, latching onto the pictures and descriptions that fit the target and conveniently discarding the rest. Okay, this is the, what? This is the top view here. Okay. Anybody you get a sense of what this target is yet? But what about Mark Hall? He actually wrote the word Stonehenge. It's not vague and it's not interpretive. What about the fact that Mark named the target? Well, I, I account for that. I would really like you to account for that. I, all I can say is either it's a lucky hit or he's a plant. And I know that doesn't okay. sound I, I know that doesn't sound nice, but in the business okay. of magic and, and the kinds of things we study, okay. these kinds of things happen all the time. Or so we have to be careful. So I would have had to been here at the start of that session to see, you know, right. and so on. Maybe this was you not guys, a scientific uh, control. Yeah, maybe you guys, you know, you told them what it was. How do I know? To give this phenomenon a fair chance, these remote viewers have agreed to participate in a controlled test. This time, we will pick the target. If these viewers really have the power of second sight, we're about to witness something extraordinary.